we are not supposed to manifest God in church. We are supposed to carry God to the market. He said, go into all the worlds. When we come to church like this, we should learn secrets so that we go out and manifest. But the devil is pursuing people into church. And we are here doing rituals, doing ceremonies, singing songs, acting drama, and acting as if we are superstars. Today, when you see our music ministers, some of them you think is Lady Gaga that is their role model. You see, pastor's wife, pastor is like the, a like Jezebel. A pastor is like a music star. I'm not saying don't be excellent, and I'm not saying dress like Moses. But I'm saying we have a code. You're welcome to another exciting video with Apostle Mike here. I hope you will be blessed. We were not created to function like animals. The Bible said, a man in honor that knoweth not is like the beast of the field that perishes. And so there are many Christians, many believers walking on the face of the earth, but they are not functioning from that ascended realm. They have condescended to living and operating like the beast of the field because they do not know that they are created to function in the place of honor. There are three realms of existence. The first realm of existence is the natural realm, is the visible realm, is the realm that you can see and touch, the tangible realm. But you see, the totality of your essence does not culminate only in this realm. Your essence is designed such that you live from planes that are higher than this realm. You are only designed to manifest in this realm. But what defines your essence are in realms superior to the natural realm. The natural realm is the realm of feelings. It's the realm you interact with, with your body. But your life involves much more than what you feel and what you touch. There is a higher realm than the natural realm called the preternatural realm. That's the soulish realm. It's the cognitive realm. It's the realm of reason. You see, there are many people today that lead others because they have tapped into the powers of the soulish realm. And so some of them are inventors because they have explored the possibility of the soulish realm. They have invented things and on the strength of that, they control the mindset and the ideology of society. For example, there's a young man called Mark Zuckerberg who was able to solve part of the communication problem of humankind. And so on account of his access to possibilities in the soulish realm, he designed a system called the Facebook. And all of us seated here, if not all, maybe most of us, on a daily basis, we go into Facebook to draw inspiration. And most of us, the things we see and hear from that platform is what determines our lives. So we can't even go beyond the system that he has created. Now for him to have the authority to create something that regulates human philosophy and ideology is because he has tapped into a place in the soulish realm. Because of that, he controls the mindset of almost 2 billion people. And he has a robust workforce working for him that it dictates when they rest and when they walk. Because he has accessed something in the soulish realm. And there are many people like that. Most of our leaders today have tapped into something about the soulish realm so they understand human psychology. And on the strength of their understanding of human psychology, they have created a system of government and governance. That's why before a child even develops the soulish mind, the devil is already attacking that child with corruption. Most children are sick from five days old. And before they are three years old, they have operated upon them. So it will be impossible for them to ever imagine that you can walk on earth and not be sick. Because the devil has already attacked the consciousness with the circumstances they've gone through. It will have to take a process of renewal by the spirit and the world for them to ever come to a point of number one, believing that healing is a possibility and number two, believing that divine health is a reality. So when you tell such a child that you can live without drugs, that child will tell you it's impossible. And I'm not saying if you are sick, don't take drugs. You grow in these things. I'm only saying that there is a place in God where we can get to because our standard is Jesus. And when Jesus walked on earth, there was no time when he went to a herbalist and said, please uh, mix uh, this uh, green leaf for me, let me drink. There was no time where he went to a physician and said, Kai, my back, help me, help me. There was never a time like that. That means that reality is in God and we must function there. But you see, the reason it's impossible for you and I to think it is because even before we were five years old, 
we knew the walls of the hospital and malaria had trained us too well before we met Bible. They are the elements of this world. Before you ever knew to call Jesus, most of you knew how to insult people. Anger was already erupting on your inside. And you, you, you can destroy, even before you know the price of buying a pencil, you can break a glass out of anger because the external realities have educated you and given you a consciousness. Because Paul was the one who showed us the chronicle. Go to Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. You will see when Paul began to rank it. You will now know what God gave us. God didn't just give us a, a scepter to exercise government. God actually made us princes in Zion. And in the strata, the structure, the leadership structure of Zion, we occupy the top position in rank. And I will show you. See what Paul said in Colossians 1.15. Talking about Jesus. He said, Jesus is the image of the invincible God. The first of every creature. So he's trying to show you spiritual stratification so he said among every creature jesus is the first in rank he now went further go to verse 16. he said for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are on earth visible and invincible so he's trying to show you that although jesus as a man associates with creation but he's also outside creation he created creation but he also participates in creation so he said in participating in creation he is the first in rank he now went further he now began to show you the other ranks that are there so he said he's first among visible and invisible he now said whether they be thrones so when you finish with the christ the next level of authority you get to are thrones he now went to the second level or dominions he now went to the third level or principalities he went to the fourth level or powers and all things that were created are you seeing that so in the realm of god when you are made a dominion is a place where you stand so when god created man and in genesis 1 to they said let them have dominion he was bringing you into this stratification that after christ after thrones man will be a dominion now when you come to the level of thrones a man can graduate to become a throne but that will be a product of how he lives as a dominion. So a throne is not where you are created into. A throne is a reward that is given to you based on your service as a dominion. This is why Jesus was speaking to his disciples. He said, at the end of time, he said, you will sit with me on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So men are also thrones, but you have to graduate as a dominion to become a throne. Now, while you are yet on earth, and you have not finished your race you cannot become a throne but right now you are still a prince because you operate at the level of a dominion the question is what is the operation of this structure a throne going here with god a throne rules with god how many of you have studied revelation chapter 4 and 5 you see that when you get to heaven the bible said there are 24 thrones and it said upon them are 24 elders they don't send these ones on errands this ones also have thrones. They rule with God. That's why Jesus said, you will sit with me to judge the 12th tribe. So thrones are called to have rulership, fellowship with God. But a dominion is a different kind of prince. Why a throne is a prince that co with God, a dominion is a prince that God hands over a territory to. Dominion. That's why when a common person is going to fornicate, Ah, because a boy looked at her and said you are beautiful and the next thing she has pulled off her clothes not me I'm royalty you can't even find a prince walk naked or a princess no go to nations that have monarchy system princesses wear clothes you can't see their hands and if you shake them it's an honor but you find a generation where people don't know that they are noble and they are naked everybody sees them naked as though they are commoners not a prince not a prince i am covered because my body has dignity i now have a consciousness that i'm a dominion so i don't need a preacher to preach to me cover yourself i know that you can't know these are sacred commodities and only one person is permitted to come close is the one that pays the bride price you can't find me in the market. People are gambling and shouting. Hey, now this one go win. Now that one. And you are there shouting. You remove your shirt. Put it on your neck. My brother, you know easy. 
Wow. No, not me. When you want to fight, it's okay. We let you be. Princes don't, they, we don't bang towers. We don't condescend to the level of pulling our shirt and fighting. Today, not today. Me? No. Jesus said, if they slap you, turn the other cheek. If they ask you for a shirt, give them your jacket. If they say, come in mine, add another one. Don't fight with them. You are above that level. This is why we operate the way we operate. We have consciousness of nobility. Even in this democratic era, how many times do you see your president? The convoy is driving and he stops by the road. Say, I want to ease myself. Convoy is not stop. You ease yourself before you leave or you get to your destination. It's nobility. There is a code that rules us. We operate as creatures of honor. And so there is a way we carry ourselves. Not in pride, but in understanding that there is a stake on our lives. We represent God. We represent the government of heaven. So we cannot allow the civilization of this world corrupt us. It's on the strength of that nobility. They tell you, somebody is dying. You say, where is he? You know you carry something. They say, ah, he's so blessed. He's so blessed. The doctors are giving up. Where is the person? And then you show up. You look at the person. You say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you, spirit of infirmity. See, ordinary men don't talk to spirits. But when you are a ruler, when you talk, even spirits here. In the name of Jesus, you devil, I command you, come out. And the demon has no choice because you are a creature of authority. I don't have time to share testimonies. When you show up, the devil flees because he knows you know who you are. Others can steal. Others can backbite. Others can function in the flesh. Others can be wicked. Not we. We have a mentality. We are royal. We are nobles. You know what Romans 8, 17 said? It said you are joint heirs with Christ. We have inherited God. We have inherited the things of the kingdom because we are nobles. Things. Have I written unto you that believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life? So many persons here already have the life of God, but they don't know. That's why we preach the gospel. That's why the scriptures are written that you may know. The moment you know that is the life that Jesus has that you have, you will insist that only what happens in Jesus' life can happen in your own life. And it will be so because the life will support it. Why do you think your children look like you? Why do you think your children function like you? Why do you think your children can do what you do? It's not because you train them. It's because they have your life. Because if they don't have your life, the training will be a waste. The training becomes necessary and important and productive because first of all, the life was there. And so when God put his life in us, God can now tell us, don't sin. Where is the evidence of the God that you serve? Where is the evidence of the God that you worship? What people do casually in their generation, we can't do it in a conference. We call a conference an apostolic conference. We call a conference a prophetic conference. We call a conference a miracle festival. Yet, even death is over. With all, you will see 25 apostles, 33 prophets. Nothing will happen. We will come and talk deep rema, and there will be no God on the scene. A generation must become angry and say, No. Jesus said, The works that I do, He said, You shall do also, and greater works than this shall you do. When He said, This sign shall follow them, He didn't say His prophets. That means our senators should heal the sick, our senators should prophesy. That means our businessmen should have prophecy so that before they enter a business, they pick it from heaven and say, no, this business will fail in three months. And it's natural because of the realm where they are operating from. This is what Christianity is about. But we have reduced Christianity to a set of doctrines and religious practices. And so there is a need for the higher life. They say your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. They say even your slaves and born servants so the thing remains even for slaves to manifest. And we are the generation that will mirror the glory of God. This is why you can afford to be lukewarm. You must place a demand. Tonight, I took out time to teach like this so that you understand the emphasis. If I come here and manifest only, you will leave this meeting saying the guy is anointed. The goal is not about being anointed. When the move of God begins, you are not looking for special ministers. You are looking for tribes. He said the sons of Isaac. They had understanding of times and seasons and knew what Israel ought to do. So when you enter the Saka tribe, everyone can see. 
He said the Levites were separated to serve God on the altar. So when you meet the Levites, all of them are priests. That's what defines the move of God. What is understanding again? Is it not to do what you said? He said, no. This thing is specific to every individual. That was when God started teaching me about signs. So there are times when you move and as things are happening, you are watching because you are supposed to act God. And for you to act God, you must see the script. It's not by creativity. And so when you stand, sometimes the Holy Ghost will now whisper, lay hands on you. So it's not about caricature. When you come and you lay hands, you now see that the power will move. Ah, is this how it works? Sometimes you stand, the Holy Ghost say, shout and declare. And you will shout and declare, the sick will be healed. Uh -huh. So it's by following the motions. So you now start learning your own sickness. And so there are times when you come for a meeting, you start feeling heat on your left hand. And as you are feeling that heat, it means the healing anointing is at work. So life is flowing as healing. At that point, you can heal. Sometimes you come for a meeting. Everywhere, people are emotional. Emotion is not power. Emotion means there is adrenaline. Power is a real spiritual commodity for creating change. When they are shouting, and sometimes they will sing the songs they know you like to sing. Leave them and enter your spirit and check what God is doing. You may come for the whole service. God say, teach and go. Although they were expecting the dead to rise, you will teach the word of God and bless them and go. Because it's what the Holy Ghost is doing that God is doing. And if you don't find it, you will not get the result. All of that life touched me. And as I started doing it, I started getting results. I started getting results. Life came again. I said, this time around, you must build the character of God. So there are certain dimensions you can't see until you have compassion. Because if you don't have compassion, you'll think it's act. And you'll think it's about yourself. So you'll come for a meeting, although God has told you how the person will be healed. If you do it, he may still not be healed. If you don't have compassion. So that it will not be by proving point to people. You know, nowadays, people will call you and say, if you say you are a man of God, go to a deaf school and go and pray for them. Jesus went from place to place as the spirit led him the people who needed it met him there and when the spirit led him to go house to house to heal he went house to house if the spirit is not leading you and you want to prove a point you'll be in trouble because in the new testament dispensation we don't manifest god to prove to people that we are strong men of god we manifest god to do the will of the father and so it will be virtue that will prove it otherwise everywhere people talk you'll be there proving yourself it's not about you it's about jesus and Jesus is not in the hurry to prove himself. When the devil came and said, if you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. He said, man shall not live by bread alone. It's not because he can't turn stones. But he didn't come to prove a point. Because when Jesus was walking in the flesh, he was living the will of the Father. Now we are living the will of the Son. So if Jesus is not permitting it, you would. But if Jesus tells you, go and show them. Ah yeah, that day you will come with white suit. <laughs> you will come with white suit. I said, who is talking? Let's go to a stadium. I want the whole world to see it. But all of this is life that will teach you. So you begin from boldness. You come into virtue. You come into understanding. You now come into the character of the spirit. So you can come to a service. If you don't love the people, nothing will happen. Otherwise, you will come to manifest and take their money. That's why you see fake prophets and fake apostles today. They just come and do one abracadabra so that they can collect people's money. Hey, your name is Titus. The moment they finish, they say, put the seed here. God is saying, if you want to go to the next level, bring 2,000 cities. It's a lie. God didn't tell them anything. So it is the more you do that you are empowered. The more you do, you are empowered. When this truth was taught me, I went out that same day. Guess what happened? My ignorance didn't allow me to see any manifestation. I saw the blind. I prayed. Nothing happened. I saw the deaf. I prayed. Nothing happened. I went and searched again. And the first thing I discovered was do it with boldness. I got that more boldness. I came back. And the next time, I did it in public. I went to a meeting. Somebody was crippled on the chair. I said, God wants to do something here. <laughs> Stand up! Because they say, Jesus shouted with a loud voice. The guy looked at me and said, I can't stand up. I said, stop complaining. Come on! He tried. He couldn't. I went in boldness. Dragged him up. It didn't work. When I discovered I was sweating, I said, I needed the whole church to participate in the matter so that they won't say this man failed. I said, let all of us stretch hands. We all pray the man didn't stand up. That means the whole church didn't know eternal life, including the preacher. I now went back and searched again. I now discovered that in addition to boldness, there is also virtue. 
So when you start servicing life, life begins to flow. So there was boldness, but life was not flowing. Because in Mark 6, 19, Luke 6, 19, the Bible said they touched him. Virtue left him and healed them all. So I had boldness, but I had not gotten virtue. I now check, how do you generate virtue? It's a prayer. Worship. Fasting. So I entered a fasting program. I entered prayer program. I entered pro, um, 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 uh, worship session. I started feeling the anointing. I said, okay, virtue is flowing now. My love will take it. Sometimes when I'm praying, the thing will move. My body will be shaking. I can feel it. I know I'm not the one moving myself. My stomach is vibrating. I know, I know something is coming out of me. Sometimes the thing will shake me. I will start running in my room and the fire will be too much. When I, I loaded the love virtue, I came again. So from boldness, I have added what? Virtue. I showed up. Mahila Kuwate. I went to another sick person. In the name of Jesus, be healed. I was sensing the fire, but the fire was not moving. What do I do? He said, add knowledge. Go and study 2 Peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to verse 8. You will see there are things to keep adding. That's why you get to a level in God. The life in you will start training you. You know, in 1 John 2, 20 and 27, he said, you have an unction from the Holy Ghost. He said, that unction teaches you. So it was the life that was teaching me. Now you have boldness. Now you can generate virtue. You need understanding. Because everything we do, there is a large multitude of witnesses watching us every second. They know all our violations. They know everywhere we err. They know everywhere we disobey. And that's why we cannot reign in life. Trust me, you don't need rituals to reign in life. When you operate in righteousness, you can come to a dry land and say, let rain fall. Without a service, rain will fall. You, can, you are operating in righteousness. You can enter a meeting and say, everybody sick, be healed. And they will be healed. Because when you talk, heaven backs your world with power. Everything you do prospers. You have become the agent of Zion. I'm telling you, the powers of righteousness. When you find a man talk and heaven will respond, know that he's righteous. Because when the Bible spoke about it in James 5.16, he spoke about Elijah as a righteous man. And the guy said, try for the whole day. Me, I will wait till evening. When they were trying, if you are the one, you will be afraid. Will this thing work? Will it not work? When they were trying, he came and said, did your God travel? Maybe you should shout a bit louder. And the people were shouting. A point came, they started cutting themselves. That's human sacrifice. So that blood will come on the altar. Nothing happened. Even if their God used to call down fire, that day Elijah locked the heaven. Because you don't have right standing. You may have the nature, but your standing makes you a beast. So you can't participate in the commonwealth of Israel. And that's the problem of many Christians. When life was trying to regulate them, they shut it down. Because they didn't know that righteousness is not just the nature. It's also right standing. And it is the operation of the spirit of life that will tell you whether you are standing right or not. There are many times when it's not even that you fornicated. Life can tell you that in this season, you have been recruited to join the intercessors to pray. Because there is a gap in the spirit. We need 50 intercessors to pray for Ghana. You were the one chosen. So you may be a prophet. You may be a politician. You may be a carpenter. But that season, you have been made an, an, an intercessor. And if you don't function as an intercessor in that season, you have violated righteousness. Are you going to the same heaven that Paul is going to? Are you going to the same heaven that Enoch is going to? Are you going to the same heaven that Moses is going to? Where will you be there? Even in your own generation, do they know you as a man who works with God? Then reduce it to Ghana. Then reduce it to Accra. Even in Accra here, they don't know you as a servant of God. I came to a point, I read the stories of certain revivalists and it took sleep out of my eye. I read about a man called Dear Moody. He doesn't need a service. If Dear Moody enters a shop where people are eating, maybe he came to eat, people start going under the anointing. No prayer, no preaching. He carries so much of heaven. They said there was a time when he was traveling by a train and the train stopped in the city. And because he was present there, people started falling under the anointing. And they know him for it. Somebody now said, what is happening? Another man stood up and said, these kinds of things only happen when the mood is around. And not so long before the plane took off, they now found him sitting in that train, just reading. But as he was reading, he was generating energy that was affecting the environment. This is not somebody woke up in the night and said, every witch flying over this house die. No, I'm talking about emitting radiations of the spirit that you serve. Did you read the life of Samuel? 
when Saul came to arrest David in Nayot Rama, Samuel didn't say anything. All the soldiers that came began to prophesy. Another batch of soldiers came, they began to prophesy until Saul stood up and said, Look at these weak people, I will go and do it myself. When Saul came, he prophesied until he became naked and he prophesied from night to morning. Samuel didn't even know he was around, but the radar that Samuel created already arrested Nayot Rama. A man can sit somewhere, he's reading Bible with hunger. I, I read about a man, he went to a, 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 a wilderness, that's where he studies and prays. And he sat there on a certain day, he was reading and praying, and he was generating so much of the life of God until grass began to grow there. And grass, in a few hours, grass grew until the grass began to grow taller than him. That was when he discovered that ah, he was beginning to turn this wilderness to a fruitful field. So it's not a figurative thing. There are dimensions. These are dangerous things men have done in God. I watched some of the clip of Jaco. Somebody has cancer and they bring the person to the altar. And you know in their era, there are critics and journalists sitting. In fact, sometimes they pay sick people and bring them to church so that they are not healed to discredit the healing ministers. And they brought, Jack, they brought a cancer patient to the altar. Today we will see what this man is claiming is true. You know, that kind of situation is not about keyboard. You must have it. And Jacob called the guy up, cancer on the face. And he, hold, he held the cancer in the name of Jesus. Before he finished the prayer, cancer pulled out. Fresh skin appeared. Even the critics gave their hearts to Christ. I read about Maron Branham. They went and paid somebody because they said, if you come to Maron Branham's service, they will say, you sitting on the third row there, you have cancer or somewhere, come and you'll be healed instantly. They now say this is fake, that is arranging. They now went and brought somebody who didn't have cancer. And the person came out claiming that he has cancer. And when Maron Branham wanted to pray for him, he said, no, but you don't have cancer. They don't told me you don't have cancer. The person insisted. The Holy Ghost now told him he came to discredit him. So since you say you have cancer, go with it. So they don't just take it. They can put it there. <laughs> go with it. These are things that men did. Sweet Wiggles what? was praying for somebody in a service. Usually when they enter service, People will line up in front because the way he starts his meeting before preaching, the first person that gets to the altar will be healed of whatsoever. Imagine the audacity. Atmosphere is not yet charged. You have not preached. Faith have not risen in people. Whoever comes here first will be healed. So people will run to the altar and they brought a man who had cancer. Stomach was swollen up. He punched the stomach. The guy fell like a dead man. People shouted, hey, carry him up. He punched him the second time. The guy fainted. When he said, carry him up again, somebody shouted in the congregation, you son of the devil, leave that man alone. Do you want to kill him? <laughs> you know, there's a time when the thing becomes too much. People have to call a pastor. And Smith Wigglesworth looked at him and said, shut up, mind your business. This is my business, I know my business. And he punched the person the third time, cancer fell off, and the guy started running. Church exploded. These are dimensions that men handled. And you, you come to church, you think it's about singing? You think it's about preaching deep messages so that people will clap and say you are a spiritual man. So it's no longer about one special preacher coming to manifest what he knows. Everybody can carry God in a tangible manner. And until we get there, the body of Christ don't know what maturity is. This is why this conference was put together. If you go to the witch coven, all of them by locate because nobody drives them. Everybody appear in the meeting and disappear. That means by location is normal. If I appear on this altar, all of you will run. And you will say he's a witch. Because you believe only witch can do signs and wonders. That's how backward we are. If you go to a witch coven, a small girl of 10 years can be a grandmaster. Because there are some knowledge that is not read, it's imparted. So they can carry that small girl into a coven and she'll be there for seven days. If she comes out, she can fly. She can kill. She can cause rain to fall. She can stop a, a, a pastor. In fact, sometimes you see one gear, 17 years. She says she has closed down 200 churches. And you are wondering, well, how? Because she walks in an experiential power. Meanwhile, we are the ones who should carry God to the street. We are not supposed to manifest God in church. We are supposed to carry God to the market. He said, go into all the worlds. When we come to church like this, we should learn secrets so that we go out and manifest. But the devil is pursuing people into church. And we are here doing rituals, doing ceremonies, singing songs, acting drama, and acting as if we are superstars. Today, when you see our music ministers, some of them you think is Lady Gaga that is their role model. 
you see pastor's wife pastor is like they a digestible a pastor is like a music star i'm not saying don't be excellent and i'm not saying dress like moses but i'm saying we have a code we have a code but you see when we don't have hunger for eternal things even the bible to us will become a history book but it's a holy man of god speak as they were carried i believe this video has inspired you and more than inspiration has pushed you into action because the scripture speaking it says blessed are ye when ye do these things the things you just listen to blessed are you when you do them we implore you to get to work on the messages you've just listened to if it means repeating the message to get a point you didn't get at the cost of the message maybe by a distraction or something please do as it would greatly benefit your spiritual growth and that is what we are after in this channel and that brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching the video if you are a new subscriber welcome on board and if you are a returning subscriber thank you for coming back your presence and your view means so much to us please we urge you to share this video once again with your friends and family if you have not done so share it on whatsapp share it on on facebook share it share it on all social media platforms that you are so that somebody can get blessed through you and also um do well to like this video comment on the video comment your thoughts comment anything you think if you if you if you if you need help questions you can just comment them down below and they will try our best to answer your questions by the help of the holy spirit and until next time keep loving the lord and stay blessed